running out. We've got five laps to go. Huffman and Vincent battle it out for the lead. Meanwhile, Chad Cole dukes it out for a second as they go into turn two. Landon Huffman coming to a comfortable lead, coming out of two. He's got about eight car lengths, put in half a second. Over the lane, this is his Chad Cole. Welcome in, race fans, to the NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series on ETV Live. We are getting ready to go short track racing at the Richmond International Raceway. And we are getting ready for some beating and banging, some exciting racing upcoming here. After coming off the Kentucky Speedway, I believe we're getting ready to see some more excitement under the lights. Tim Terry, Mike Conti, Dakota Ehrman, and John Westling pushing all the buttons to get us on the air here this evening. And Mike, exciting race last week, but once again, we look at the top of the board, and it's Chad Lawton showing the way. Yeah, Chad had a nice run last week after um, Josh Berry's misfortunes. About halfway through the race, Berry led uh, the majority up to that point. Uh, he got into an incident, uh, spun and hit the inside wall, did rebound to come back and finish 10th, but Lawton was able to, uh, to uh, pick up on that, and uh, through some pit strategy and uh, pretty good car. He, uh, he got out front and never looked back, and he won that race, so that's three wins uh, in the books for him, so he padded his lead on second place, Jared Crawford, just a little bit last week. Now, not too much because Crawford was right behind him in second, so the points battle is still as tight as ever, Tim, but Lawton has been really strong so far this season, and tonight is going to be a night where maybe Crawford or a couple of those guys behind him, maybe a guy like Gilland can kind of make up some ground in this uh, points battle. Yeah, you look at the top 10 and down on through the results last week at Kentucky, you see Danny Hansen coming from uh, Pocono, getting a top five run there to back up that win. Carson Downs, after having a tough run at Pocono, comes back with a top five run in fourth. You have Josh Berry, who dominated the first half of the race, led 61 laps, led the most laps of the race, came home in 10th after an incident there about midway through the race. Adam Gilliland comes home in ninth and maintains his top five in the standings and when we look at the point standings i know john has the top 25 getting ready to get up there on the screen if it's not already and you see chet lawton on top you see Jarrett crawford in second uh dustin montgomery danny hansen tied for third right now jake sturgis in fifth get a lend it downs peter bennett rich Doucet, and kenneth o'keefe complete your top 10 but when we look at the top 10 here mike you see chad lawton and Jarrett crawford really beginning to inch away from the rest of their competition and then everybody else is essentially in a heap yeah, like you said, the two wheelman cars have definitely broken away, and then you have another wheelman car in third. And uh, Montgomery, he, he he got the win this season. He he has his one win, so he's got some bonus points there. But uh, he hasn't been as consistent 
as his two teammates up there were. Now, mind you, Jared Crawford, the first race of the season in Daytona, uh, he didn't have a very good run, I believe. Uh, he might have gotten a pit road speeding penalty at one point, and uh, I'm not sh certain, but I believe by the end of that thing, his car is pretty torn up in a wreck. So he was outside the top 30 in that one, and for him to rebound uh, five weeks into the season all the way back up to second place, that's pretty pretty strong. But there's guys back there, like you said, they're kind of all bunched up right now. You've got third and fourth tied, and the difference between third and the difference between seventh right now is only 16 points. You go back to eighth, it's 17 points, and you know just a little bit of points difference, you know, back to tenth. So, you know, tonight, like you mentioned before, Tim, there's going to be a lot of beating and banging. It's going to be close quarters racing, and uh, tempers do flare uh, at Richmond, whether it be in real life or on here. You're going to have people that are going to be ticked off at each other by the end of the race. So, it's going to be the job of these guys at the top of the standings to watch their surroundings and try to get through it as well as possible but sometimes it's just inevitable that you're going to get hit and like i said guys like gillen sturgis hansen that are a little bit behind the battle for first right now if lawton or crawford have any problems they'll be right there on them so tonight could definitely be a turning point a little bit past midway in this championship and the one thing that really strikes me from last week is when we talked to danny hansen we asked danny uh, what are you looking at for points, looking at for goals? And he said, obviously, top 25 coming in was the main goal. We're five races through this season. He's already in fourth place in the standings. Fifth pl or 25th place, check that right now, is 98 points, albeit there is one drop in this season. Danny nearly has 100 points on Dylan Duvall in position number 25, 170 to 98. Uh, so just over 70 points, I should say, but close to that 100-point mark when we look at points. Nevertheless, he said that that, that goal is essentially already achieved we can essentially go out and have a couple of bad races and still be in the top 25 my main goal is to get up there and win this championship it's confidence that goes a long way in this sport and danny hansen definitely has it uh, don't count out danny hansen dustin montgomery is always strong as well uh, you look at jake sturgis who came down from the nascar iRacing.com series world championship he knows how to perform under pressure but that that's one thing that really st struck me last week was Danny saying we can still win this championship yeah Danny and uh, Carson Downs uh, the two J show drivers they are very confident right now uh, they have good equipment under them every week I know that firsthand because I have a hand in that so I know that they have good cars each and every week and when they don't have any bad luck you know they're they're always up there you know you look at Carson Downs season you know, he started off with the second at Daytona, almost won it, but made the swap, finished second. That was great. Finished sixth the second week at Texas. Then uh, we all know what happened at Phoenix when he got turned upside down in front of the field and was involved in a wreck a couple weeks ago at Pocono uh, when Lawton made it three wide on the restart, and unfortunately uh, Carson got the short end of the stick. So, you know, again, he had a strong start. He started to fade a little bit. Hanson, however, he got off to a slow start at Daytona with electrical troubles and a bunch of things happened to him that night, and now he's back up in this thing coming on strong. And I look at the schedule here, Tim. After Richmond, we have three races to go. Dover is the last race before the winter break. The guys in the NIPS will take a couple-week vacation. They'll get their minds clear. They'll come back to New Hampshire and Charlotte. You look at those tracks, Danny Hansen, Carson Downs, that whole team right there. There couldn't be any better tracks than New Hampshire, Dover, and Charlotte. So those two guys are confident going into tonight at Richmond because they are so good at short tracks here of late, and I know that they will be confident going into the next couple weeks. And again, um, I, I keep bringing him up. Adam Gilland, I've looked at him this week. He's been very fast. And if you can be fast here at Richmond, you'll be fast at um, when you go to New Hampshire because it's the same base setup. So guys like that, whoever's fast here tonight, uh, they're definitely uh, going to be looking forward to coming back from that uh, break in a couple weeks uh, to go to New Hampshire and, and do the second la second to last race and go into Charlotte with uh, with some momentum. Let's bring in Dakota Ehrman down here on pit road and let's get started with the the picks. And I, I guess he's uh, possibly stepped away a little bit here, Mike. Let's uh, let's talk about picks here. And I'm going to go first since uh, I, I think I'm the leader or something like that or close to it. Uh, one driver that I haven't picked this season. And I saved him a little bit for this A-list. We're going to go with Chad Lawton, your point leader for tonight. Uh, we're going to go with Josh Berry for the B-pick. Has come on strong here the last few weeks. Just really hasn't had the finishes 
to really close the deal and get into the top 10. I believe Josh Berry will do it tonight and get up into the top 10 in points. And then we are going to go with Vinny Sansone for our C pick for this evening. See if we can't give Vinny a little bit of a good mojo here. Yeah, Vinny definitely needs something good to happen uh, this season. He'd have a very strong uh, DWC campaign last year, and uh, this season he really hasn't done any better. So uh, I know he's good at short tracks. He's he's one of the uh, one of the top dogs in the uh, in the sprint cars and the Silver Crown. So he should know how to get around the short track tonight. For myself, my a pick A this week is for Adam Gill, and like I said, I can't stress how strong he is. So we'll see what he can do tonight. We can keep his head on his shoulders and keep that car in one piece. I think he'll be there at the end. Uh, the B pick will be uh, Jarl Tyne. Uh, I've watched him this week. Uh, again, another driver, if he can keep his head and his shoulders and make it to the end, he should be okay. I uh, That whole team uh, has been pretty good this week. And to go with the theme of MC Racing, Tim, for the C pick, we're going to pick uh, Josh Connors. Uh, I think that Tuxedo car is going to bring him some good luck tonight. He didn't too, do too badly at Kentucky last week. I think he's going to have a little bit of momentum going into tonight. Josh Connors will get a solid top 15 coming out of Richmond. The one thing that he mentioned to me before going racing was the word luck. He said the setup isn't where it should be on that race car, but luck is going to mean a lot when it comes to Richmond. And when we do short track racing, that's essentially half of the game, trying to swoon Lady Luck into giving you a good finish in this one. And Connors definitely does need it. We're going to step away for just a few quick moments, come back with our national anthem, and go racing at the Richmond International Raceway. It's 200 laps coming up at you on ETV Live. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway. Before we do get into this evening's racing action, we need to get one important piece of business out of the way. Down trackside with the Cactus Cuties for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight. Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the
We are getting ready to go racing at the Richmond International Raceway. Final few seconds of warm-up clicking down. And when we go through this lineup, Mike, we're going to see the two drivers that have really dominated the season start on the front row. It looks like Wheelman definitely found the speed in qualifying this week with the top three spots being uh, held down by their team. We're just going to have to wait and see, though, if we can get some long green flag runs in tonight. You know, these guys have been complaining about it all week, and I'm sure Dakota's heard about it as well. The tires... Uh, fall off really bad here. They get a lot of heat in the rear tires and you start to slide around. So hot lap speed might not be everything this week. As, uh, like I said, long runs uh, and long run setups might come in handy if we can get to that point. So we'll have to wait and see. But Wheelman definitely looking strong. Danny Hansen in fourth. Kenneth O'Keefe fifth. So a lot of good cars up in the top five. And we look down through the top ten and uh, a lot of good race cars uh, starting up front tonight. And let's go down our starting grid. It's 35 cars strong for this evening's racing action. The NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series at the Richmond International Raceway. On the pole, it's the 83 at Jarrett Crawford putting in a time of 19.826. To the outside, it's Chad Lawton, your point leader, 26. Third will be the 40 of Josh Lawton with a 19.87. Fourth is Danny Hansen. In position number five, it's Kenneth O'Keefe from Smithville, Ontario. To the outside, it's the 81 of Adam Gilliland. On the inside is Cody Bias in 7th. On the outside is Jarl Tyen. Completing your top 10 is the 8 of Dustin Montgomery on the inside in position number 9. On the outside, 34, Matt Busa. Row number 6 is Landon Huffman on the inside. On the outside of him will be Joey Brown in 12th. Casey Malone will roll off in position number 13 to the outside. It is the Sea Draft, Josh Connors. 15th will be Rich Doucette in the number 96. Outside of him, Alex Chambrone in the 0-2. As the drivers begin to roll off, it's the Speedco 72 with Josh Berry to the inside, Rob Ackley 22 to the outside. 19th will be Peter Bennett, outside of him and rounding out the top 20 tonight will be Yuka Sabalainen. Brad Wright roll off 21st to the outside, 22nd Dylan Duvall. 23rd is Carson Downs, the 97 outside of him is the 77 of Andrew Fayash, the 3rd. Next up is Vinny Sansone in 25th, Brandon Cattell in the 14 to the outside. 27th is Kyle Gatul in the 71. 28th is Brandon Bookberger. Jackpot Jake Sturgis rolls off from 29th and 30th, Matt Moose. 31st is Matt Witten and 32nd is Brandon Schmidt. All of these drivers, 31st and backed him, did not take a time tonight. And completing your fields, Philip Geis, Benjamin Burmeister, two drivers from Germany, and Derek Krohn. We're going to kick it down track side to Dakota Ehrman. I believe he's made his way back. Final thoughts before we go racing. Well, I guess he's gone to the, the hot dog stand there in the infield, and I, I think you're going to need a good snack for this one because I think this one's going to be a very exciting race. 83 on the inside of Jared Crawford. Going to get ready to put the hammer down for the first of 200 laps. It's a long way around here, Mike. What do you got to do to survive this thing? Uh, you just uh, you just got to stay out of the wrecks, Tim. That's really all there is to it. Keep the rear tires under you and stay out of the wrecks. Those are the two main goals here tonight. And we'll see how that unfolds through 200 laps at the Richmond International Raceway. Jarrett Crawford is gone. Green flag flies, and what a start for the Tim's Corner Motorsports, number 83 at Crawford. Crawford out over the 26 of Chad Lawton. It's side-by-side, -side Josh and Danny Hansen. Hansen to the outside, and it looks like he's falling back into the clutches of 73. 73 wants a piece. Yeah, it's definitely tough to keep the outside line here at Richmond. There's not a lot of grip up there, and the bottom gets a huge run off the corner under you, but Hansen holds his ground up top. Battle for third and fourth continues down to 1 and 2, 40 on the inside, 78 on the outside. The battle continuously through the center off the corner. 78 gets a nice run right there. He'll hold the position, but Lawton will not give it up on the bottom. 40 on the inside of Josh Lawton, 73 right behind him. Kenneth O'Keefe and Danny Hansen in the Pro Geek Consulting, 78 to the outside. Adam Gilliland looks on in the 81 as well as he looks to get a piece of the top five, currently sitting in position number six. As they continue to go side by side, Danny Hansen holding his own on the outside. Very impressive early. Yeah, that car must be really good, Tim. If you can hold the top like that with someone on fresh tires under you on the bottom, now the car definitely has to be pretty decent. So if Hansen can get down to the bottom here, uh, he should have a piece to work with. Unfortunately, he's got uh, Kenneth O'Keefe right there. He's got Gillen. He's got a whole line of cars behind him. That's why he's not letting the 40 lot go. And Lot's not going to give it up either because he's in the preferred line. So they're just going to continue to battle. We're going on the fifth lap here. They've been side by side ever since. It looks like Lawton 
is going to almost clear the 78 right there, and he is now. O'Keefe is going to go to the inside of Hanson. It looked like for a second that the 78 may have a hole, but it's way too early to be forcing an issue here as the 73 going to try to pick up the spot. It might be a little bit of an easier battle here. No, here comes the 78 back to the outside, slip up in the corner. Now Adam Gilliland will look for it. Will Adam let him in line? 78 looking to the outside, trying to maintain a top five spot. 81 going to throw it in on the inside. They get really tight off the two right there. Danny tries to pinch a little bit. He's got to run right there. Maybe he'll clear. Maybe he won't. Nope, not going to happen. Tries to let him in. Now Bice is going to go to the bottom now. He's got a hole. Let's see if he takes it right here. It's going to be really close. And he's going to get down off the of floor. So that's going to drop Hansen back to sixth. And oh, now Yong comes to the bottom of Bice right there. Strong move uh, by the 04 of Yarl right there to take that. I believe that's the seventh spot away from Bice. So Chris driving early on for him. A little aggressive here early, trying to keep the spot on lap number seven of a 200 as we work into corner number one once again. And these laps click by fairly quickly, 20 and a half seconds or so a lap as Jarl Tyen, uh, you mentioned him trying to chase down Cody Bias now. Yeah, Jarl is breathing down, uh, breathing down Hanson's neck. Well, he's not exactly breathing down his neck, but uh, he's, he's starting to get there. He's catching him just a little bit last time by for Hanson was a 2061 as Lawton gets sent up the track he's going to hit the wall caution isn't going to come out as he saves it right there uh yeah i'm not sure it really happened right there it looks like he might have gotten moved tim yeah he definitely got moved by kenneth o'keefe and he hit the wall uh fairly good with that right hand side of that race car and he's going to get past he got, there was four wide there i believe as Lawton's trying to find a hole on the pit road and uh we were talking about it before we came on air here tonight mike uh, Josh hasn't had the season that he's wanted to, but he's still top 25 in points now. Yeah, that's really all that matters, and if we get a camera on his car, he's really got some heavy right front damage. You can see when he goes through the corners, uh, the wheels are completely cranked 90 degrees to the left, so that car is definitely junked. Uh, that's going to be a lot of damage, probably a meatball flag for him, so he's going to have to sit in pit road for quite a while if he wants to get this thing fixed and get back out there. But like you said, he is in the top 25 pretty solidly right now. He's not as far up as I think he'd like to be, but uh, you know, the main goal is to make top 25 get to the 2013 DWC roster, and uh, he's done that so far. So although this is going to be a blow to his points, it shouldn't be too fatal. Now looking at that move made by Kenneth O'Keefe and Josh Lawton going into the corner, is it too early to be that aggressive, or, or what What did you see there possibly out of that number 73? I mean, Kenneth is definitely an aggressive driver. I'm going to go back right now and try to get a better view of it. I'm going to rewind my camera. It looks like they go down to turn number one. Kenneth drives it in there and uh, you know the lot came down just a little bit Kenneth really didn't have a whole lot of room down at the bottom um, you know he was under there though I think lot could have given him a little bit more room and you know Kenneth maybe shouldn't have drip, driven it into the corner that hard so it you know it's just it, it's a thing of give and take Tim and if they don't want to give and take then that's gonna happen now lot has the uh, has a lot of the damage from that but you know now O'Keefe has right front damage and hood damage He's already lost the spot to the 81 of Gillen, and now Jarl's starting to come up behind him as well. So, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more patience by the two right there. Uh, could have avoided that, but, you know, uh, aggressive driving is going to yield that kind of result. Yeah, a little bit of communication there from the 73 to the 81. Let him have that spot. And now Gilliland is up there in position number three. And you mentioned Jarl Tyen making the pass in the 78 of Danny Hansen. Hansen falls back to position number six, and Jarl will move up into the top five. So great run so far for one of our international drivers, the JDR Graphics, Tim's Corner Motorsports 04, as he tries to march forward and tries to catch another one of our international drivers, Kenneth O'Keefe. Yeah, the 04 and the 78, uh, Jarl and Danny, they had uh, an, an eventful uh, hay race uh, Sunday night uh, where those two drivers made contact, and uh, I don't think they were too happy with each other afterwards, but it seems like they've gotten that all straightened out, the 04 up at the 78 with no problem no hassle there so it looks like those guys have settled their differences and they come into, into tonight with some clear and fresh minds and, and they're racing very well right now in fifth and sixth so that's smart racing right there you know you want to look at smart racing you want to talk about it at smart racing if you have a problem on the track you know you know fix it off the track don't use your cars to fix it and uh, they definitely did that so good job by uh, Jarl and Danny to do that we will complete 18 laps this time by Jared Crawford is out by a second and a half over Chad Lawton and the number 26, Gilliland, is in third. O'Keefe in fourth. 
and fifth is Jarl Tyen. Looking back here for a close battle, I think the closest one we might have right now is starting to brew around sixth. It's Hansen in the 78, Baez in 27, and the eight of Dustin Montgomery as Montgomery begins to close in now on the 27 of Baez. That is for position number seven. Yeah, he's starting to close in definitely. He looks at the inside right there off at turn number four. He ducks back down low into one. Sees that there's not enough room. Backs out a little bit. He's going to try to set up his pass off at two. Not going to happen as well. It looks like the 27 of Baez. Really strong run tonight. All the Schmidt cars, Gilwin, Baez, Champeron, uh, Witten's back there somewhere. I know he's started way deep in the field as well as Schmidt. They got some pretty decent pieces this week. Uh, so uh, it's nice to see the 27 of Baez running well. 81 Gilwin solidly up in the top five. Uh, two. So those two are def definitely running well, but you know Montgomery's got a good piece under him uh, because his teammates are 1-2, and uh, his other teammate Josh Lawton was running third before he had his uh, problem with O'Keefe. So strong cars back there in uh, positions number 7 and 8. And closing in on the battle as well is Landon Huffman in the 75 and Joey Brown in the 12. They complete your top 10 right now. Uh, you mentioned Josh Lawton. He's still sitting on pit road, currently 11 laps down on the field as he gets that damage repaired after the early incident with Kenneth O'Keefe, who currently runs in position at number four. We've been green for 22 of 200 laps here this evening as these guys continue to click them off at about 21 seconds apiece. Yeah, the times definitely fall off a lot here. A, a hot lap this week will probably be in the 19.8, 19.9 second bracket. They're already off to the 21 O's. They already have about a tenth, and, or a second, a tenth, second and two tenths drop off. And they'll probably end up in the 21 twos, maybe some of the more ill-handling cars with the 21 fours by the end of the run. Uh, so there's a lot of drop-off this week, probably the most drop-off that these guys will see uh, all season um, at any of their tracks that they go to. So they really have to provide for the tires, like I said earlier, and uh, you, know, you cannot heat up those rear tires because they will not uh, cool back down. It looked like O'Keefe had a moment off a of four right there, Tim, where he might have just heated up those rear tires. You can see ty has got a nice run off a of two right there. He gets a huge run down the back stretch. He's going to attack that 73 from fourth position. Yeah, he had a little bit of that moment off corner number four, and it closes in not only Errol Tyen in the 04. If Tyen can get underneath the 73, more than likely Danny Hansen, Cody Bias, and Dustin Montgomery are going to follow him through as well. So those two have the MCR a tie-in right now, and no pun intended, between Tyen and O'Keefe. So maybe they're possibly working together a little bit here and trying to figure out what they want to do because if O'Keefe ends up going behind the 04 then he's likely going to end up behind a lot more of these cars than just one. Hey, you have the 78 back there, Pants, and you've got the 27 of Bias, the 8 Montgomery all pretty much in a row behind him. Uh, then you have the 75 of Huffman and Brown as well back there, just a little bit further back, and as Kenneth really gets loose off the corner right there, it's it's bringing in Huffman, it's bringing in Brown, everyone behind them are starting to close in. Now you got to set back there, uh, qualified 15, 30 up to 11, Busa in 12th. I mean, they are closing in on this pack because O'Keefe is definitely the slowest car right now. And you can see there's about a five to seven car freight train forming behind the 73. Lap number 29 being worked here at the Richmond International Raceway. And it looks like that pack is also closing in the 75 and 12. So if 73 of Kenneth O'Keefe gets out of line. It could very well be at least probably 8th place, maybe even 10th for the Diablo Skins number 73 as they come up off corner number 4. One more lap completed. 29 now in the book as once again out in front. It's all Jared Crawford. It looks like the gap though has stabilized a little bit between Crawford and Lawton. Actually, Lawton just a tick faster that last time by than your leader. Yeah, Lawton, Crawford and Gillen, they're all pretty much the same, uh, pretty much running the same times right now. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not too different right now. Uh, you know, you've got a 2104 for Crawford, no eight at last time by, no 009 for Lawton, no four for Gillen. So less than a ten separating these guys, but Lawton is definitely coming to the front, uh, coming, uh, getting a little bit closer to Crawford. Maybe Crawford ran the tires off the car a little bit more than Lawton did, and now it's starting to show again. Another 2109. For Crawford, 2108. For Lawton, and this time by Adam Gillen was the past. This was the 2106. So a couple hundreds here and there, but these guys are virtually even. Yeah, he's consistently faster per lap as the 04 nearly got up in the 73. Yeah. That time in corner number three and four as O'Keefe is trying to hang on for what it's worth 
as 73 holds up the freight train and back behind him. But I was just going to mention that Lawton is consistently faster per lap. Is now tying, goes to the inside of the 73. A little bit of a block there from Kenneth O'Keefe to prevent the pass from Jarl Tyen as Tyen is all over the back bumper and now on the inside he's going to make the move this time by and Kenneth O'Keefe going to try to get in there but it's not going to work 78 Danny Hansen also to the inside here comes 27 of Cody Bias 8, 75 and 12 will likely make their way through before the bleeding stops O'Keefe has to just keep his head on right now he's got to understand that there's really not much he can do in this situation he's got a damaged front end got tires that probably aren't too happy with him as he almost is a second off the pace that time that's how much he's killed those tires so you know Keith he's got a hole behind the 12 he's gonna have a hole possibly in front of the 75 nope Huffman's gonna get a nice run down the three he'll take the spot as well now it looks like Brown's gonna come from the inside too so the 73 O'Keefe he's gonna have a hole right here he sees it he's gonna fall in but you know he, again he's a little bit off the pace so then you're gonna have Musa right behind him you set behind him and Chevron are gonna close in as well these guys all hold each other up, so O'Keefe just needs to pull his tires down right now, Tim, and get into his group again. I believe Dakota Herman has made his way back since the first run that we had. Dakota, what are these guys talking about on fuel mileage? I'm not sure they're still uh, trying to get some information from these teams, but I know that uh, they can go quite a while. I'm thinking at least 60 to 70 some laps. Uh, probably this is a very, very small track, which makes it easy uh, on the fuel game here, guys. Good battle. Good battle back here for fifth, Tim. You have uh, Hanson uh, in fifth. You've got Bias behind him, Montgomery, Huffman, Brown. And now the freight train starts the form behind the 78. So it looks like Hanson might be struggling just a little bit here uh, 38 laps into this race. We saw him up the top five in the start of the race. He qualified in position number four, now back in position number five, but he's been fluctuating around that fourth, fifth, sixth place position. So Danny definitely has a top five car in this race. It's just a matter of uh, how long and where it finishes at the end of this event. This time by 39 completed for the 83 of Jarrett Crawford. And it's now 1.2 seconds between himself and Chad Lawton. The last time by Lawton once again, seven thousandths of a second quicker than Jarrett Crawford. He's slowly reeling him in. Looks like Lawton definitely did a nice job keeping the tires under him the first 40 laps in this race. Now he's going to start to attack. He runs a 19 that time. Crawford beats him by one with hundredth and 18. Gillen beats them all by with a 13. So really the 81 will be fast this one lap. It's just the, you know, the 26 will be fast this another lap. It's just one big flip-flop right now between the top three. But you have to look at the intervals right now. You know, they're separated by a second and a half. You go all the way back to Jarl in fourth. He's 5.1 seconds behind. So about a three and a half second gap between third and fourth right now. So these top three have separated themselves. They have some breathing room so they can kind of take it easy now. Uh, but, you know, Jarl didn't close in on him just a little bit that time. So uh, they're not out of the woods yet. That 04 can easily close in on him by the end of this fuel run if we continue to go green here. And uh, nice run to start off this race, Tim. We really haven't said anything yet, but you know, this track is usually pretty rough. And uh, we've had a 43 lap uh, green flag run to start this thing off. So a uh, really nice start so far and keep in mind if this thing does go green a little bit longer Jared Crawford out the windshield can see the rear end of this pack the 50 of Matthew Moose Philip Geist the 58 Kyle Gatula 71 Brandon Bookberger Benjamin Burmeister and the rest of the field is right on the same straightaway now as the 83 of Jared Crawford one thing I did want to mention we have 34 drivers on the lead lap the one driver that is multiple laps down and is 23 laps down for Josh Lawton he is back on the racetrack right now and looks like He's there with Rich Doucette and the 92 of Casey Malone as Josh Lawton. It looks like that car is the semi up to speed per se as he's turning uh, 21 O's uh, that last time by. He was quicker than the leader. Obviously, he's got new tires, but uh, it looks like they've got that car repaired, but it is 23 laps down. Yeah, he's not going to have a very good finish tonight, but if we do start to rack up the wrecks here, the little portion of this race, he can definitely... Uh, maybe pick up a couple positions and each position is a point and a point can definitely mean a lot when trying to make it into the top 25 and tonight uh, he's definitely going to lose some ground uh, to the leaders he's going to flip back toward uh, that 25th line or, or 25th place cutoff line uh, so he's going to be really close to that but 
you know, he's doing the right thing right now. He got back out there. He didn't just quit. He's trying to make as many laps and trying to pick up as many points as he can. So, you know, that's that's smart point racing from Lawton. He's been around this for a long time. Uh, he's been DWC a couple seasons now. So, uh, you know, he's, he's doing what he's got to do. And his second place goes for a battle. Keep a half eye on this 40 as well because look who's in front of him, guys. 73 of Kenneth O'Keefe. Keep a half eye on him because I'm not sure if there's any hard feelings there or not. 73 pulls way down and out of the way. That's probably safe for uh, Kenneth's chances right now as Chad Lawton loses that second place spot, as we mentioned, to Adam Gilliland. Gilliland will try to reel in Jared Crawford, but they lost a little bit of time there. Gilliland is now 1.5 seconds behind Jared Crawford. He just made up a tenth that lap, Tim, a 25 from Crawford to a 15 from Yolen. So Yolen out in the clean air now, right now. He pulls the 26 off the corner by at least two car lengths. So uh, that, that car is really good in the long run. I, I just can't stress that enough. That's the best looking car I've seen in Richmond in a long time. And he runs a 19 right there. He picks up another six 100s. That 81 is definitely closing in. He slides the tires a little bit to one. That's not going to help him. But if he can keep those tires on it, Crawford's going to have a... Uh, a battle on his hands not before too long and when he gets to the back of the field Tim that's definitely going to slow him down Matt Moose at the tail end of the lead lap right now just ran a 40 a 21 42 leader is at a 21 29 so he's almost a couple tenths off so that'll definitely hold up the 83 to the point with the 81 the 26 and possibly everyone behind him uh, catch him just a little bit we are one a quarter distance through this race lap 51 going to be completed this time by for Jared Crawford in the 83 Gilliland Lawton, Tyen, and Bias, your top five. Bias making his way up into the top five. Danny Hansen in the 78, falling back to position number seven behind Dustin Montgomery. Landon Huffman, Joey Brown, and Matt Busa, your top ten. We mentioned Kenneth O'Keefe falling back. O'Keefe is back to position number 12, and he's got a hungry pack behind him. And look who's making his way through the field. 97 of Carson Downs. Downs right now in position number 15. He started back in 23rd. Seems like each and every week, 97 doesn't qualify quite as well as he needs to uh, but just some way somehow he's always really good in the long run and keeps the tires under that car and now he's making his way to the front almost inside the top or actually yeah, there he is in 15 so he's inside the top 15 from a 26 place starting spot make that 14 as Doucette pulls over and lets him by so 97 car coming in the front right now running time is very comparable to the leader at this point and your leader has a front row seat to the battle in front of him for about P33 right now as Geis and Bookberger and Moose go at it just in front of your leader. Bookberger going to fall back to position 34 as now he sees the leader, Jared Crawford, right behind him. Leader lapping cars under green, lap 55. I can't tell you the last time I've seen this, Tim. I don't know about you, but I don't normally see cars get lapped anymore, so this is... This is pretty cool, so uh, you know now we're going to have to see how well uh, Cr Crawford can get through this traffic. It's kind of an art itself, Tim, when you have to try to cut up the traffic and not lose too much time. And right now Crawford is losing a lot of time. Last time by, he was two tenths slower than Adam Gillen. And Adam is almost, yeah, he's actually under a second now, 988 thousandths of a second behind him. Crawford slips way up the track. Gillen should cut another couple tenths out of that. Gillen will be at the leader's bumper uh, before too long. Now, if you're Jared Crawford in the 83, obviously the, the 17 of Brandon Bookberger is not going to roll over for you. Uh, obviously, you're trying to get that extra point for leading the most laps, but you have a little bit of a cushion. Do you possibly let Adam get up to you when he does get up to you, let's say? Take that lead away and let him, per se, be the snow plow through the lap traffic and get through the traffic and just follow him through? Yeah, you can either do that, which is pretty smart if you're racing... Um, to get in the top 25, but Crawford is second in points and got a little bit of a cushion in both ways the points, so he can use the bumper right now. I mean, I already think fix the collision sphere so you can hit people, so yeah, 17 is two tenths slower a lap than he is. Uh, Crawford has every right in the world right now as Gilman really closes in on him to kind of give him a little bit of a tap in the center of the corner and get him a little bit loose. Like right there, he's going to get a nice run. He should take it into three. Bookberger yields. That's how you do it. 17 goes up the track. 83 goes by. Here comes the 81 to take advantage of as well. So Gilliland will try to go underneath here. Brandon Bookberger. And now he closes in once again on the 83 of Jared Crawford. Just a couple of laps ago, it was a second and a half. And now it is three tenths of a second. Three car lengths between your top two drivers, which had Lawton now 1.5 seconds behind your top two as they navigate traffic. Bookberger one lap down, and now next up on the list is Matthew Moose in the number 50. 
And coming into this week, Tim, it was uh, where he's getting around that Matthew Moose might have bowed out of the Pro Series. Uh, there's something, I guess, on the on the incident sheet uh, that people were telling me about that uh, it pretty much said that the 50 car would not be running the rest of the season. Obviously, either that was a misunderstanding or maybe Matt changed his mind, but uh, Moose is here tonight, uh, not running all that well. As, oh, it's going to get real close right there, 58 at Geis and, and Moose. They're just trying to stand the lead lap, but Moose is definitely here, and he's not here to play around. He almost gave the 58 the bumper in one of two. And now the 83 is right up on this battle with the 50 of Matthew Moose and the 58 of Philip Geis. That is the battle for 32nd, I believe, on this racetrack here indeed 30 second 50 moves underneath the 58 now does the 83 try to stick his nose in there and put the 58 to the rear so oh, 83 there he up goes to the back bumper are we going to go three wide here oh he thought about it matthew moose in the 50 going to pick up one spot the 83 at crawford he's got to watch that rear view yeah I mean, on new tires crawford could have made that work but on old tires right now you just really do not know if the car is going to stick into the corner and it's smart for crawford not to do that crawford is driving smart like he always does and He's really being cautious, and Gillen is giving him room to do that as well. Uh, but, you know, I look at the intervals again right here. Jarl was 5.3 seconds behind about 15 laps ago. Now he's 3.3 seconds behind. Everyone else in the field that isn't affected by lap traffic has really picked up at least two seconds of these leaders. So, you know, Crawford is being smart right now, but if he doesn't watch out, he's going to have another couple cars added, added to the 81, added to the 26 that are going to be on his bumper. And he gets past Matthew Moose here. I believe he's going to have about two seconds in time between the next driver up, which is now Matt Witten, as he battles with Kyle Gatula and Matt Moose. So there's going to be a little bit of time there between the 83 and the eight, or the 83 and the next lap car. But that's when he gets past the number 50 of Matthew Moose. Of course, Moose is trying to stay on the lead lap to get possibly the uh, don't doesn't want to be the lucky dog because if we do see some green flag pit stops here. It could be interesting as the 50 gets up into the wall, 83 to the Whoa. inside, 81 going to follow him down, and they will put the 50 one lap back. I thought Dylan was going to get to the left door of uh, Moose right there. got really close. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there, but he does get around him cleanly, as does the 83 as well. So they pull ahead of the lap traffic a lot and still uh, kind of hung up in it now. Now Chad's got to deal with these guys. He's going to go under Geis, possibly to turn one. Geis gives him the line. Nope, closes the door, so... Lawton in third, starting to get held up now. He just lost the tenth of a second that time. And if he doesn't get around the 58 and 50 soon, he's going to lose a lot more. Keep a half eye on this battle for the lead. Adam Gilliland is there within a car length on the 83. A Jarrett Cromford down the front straightaway. 68 laps completed here, all under the green flag. As the 81 looks at the 83 for the lead position. In front of these leaders, about a second and a half is the battle for position number 31. It's Kyle Gatula and the 69 of Matt Witt, and they're going at it for that spot. Yeah, they certainly are. It's always fun to watch the uh, watch the battles, you know, right before the leader's about to get to him. You see these guys drive as hard as they can. Change for the lead, Adam Gill, and now takes the lead away from the 83. 70 laps into this race, so Tim, new leader. Let's see if the 81 can start to pull away, or let's see if he'll get held up in traffic as well. Now, what we've seen in the first five races is Adam Gillen's a little more aggressive than Jared Crawford. Does he maybe use a little bit more of that aggression out on these lap cars when he gets to them? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see, but I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, you now, Gillen is not going to sit behind you too long if you're in his way. He will move you, or he'll, he'll do something to get around you. I'm not saying he's going to wreck anyone. Don't get me wrong. Gillen's a very good driver. He's very talented. He's very fast. I mean, at a track where you have to conserve tires, is Gatula gets to the wall in front of him. At a track where you have to conserve tires and keep your stuff on it, Gillen is shining. So uh, that, he's going to be very good next year, or any time that they add some more tire work, some more tire heat, he's going to be uh, in pretty good shape. He's going to go under the 71 right now, Gatula yields, he'll clear him, Crawford will not, Crawford's going to lose another couple tenths in that corner as the 71 takes his line away. So Gillen really showing what he's got tonight, and if he can do this tonight, he'll be very strong next year in DWC. So Gilliland sees the 71 roll over for a Matt Witten and the number 69 is next up on the list as the 71 rolls over for the 83 of Jarrett Crawford. So some exciting racing going on there. Crawford is going to lose a couple of tens here, but it might possibly be the uh, tires starting to let go on the 83. Uh, Craw or Gilliland's car is really coming in, as you mentioned here. 74 working on the board as we'll come by this time. We'll have 74 completed the 200. They're really get through this race very quickly here. Before we know it, we're going to get to halfway. Gilliland again, 21.290 that time. 
Crawford, 21.387. So again, another tenth. The lead is now to six tenths of a second as Gillen closes in on the back of the 48.69. And Gillen looked underneath or looked underneath there, going into the corner, getting a little bit more of a run. Brad right in the number 48s up here as well. And Brad was having a solid effort, qualified in 21st place, and now he's about to be lapped under the green flag as the 69's all oh. up on the back bumper of the 48. 48, a little bit of a wiggle. The 81 watches it here. We'll see where he goes as the 48. And the 69 going to make a little bit of contact there, going into corner number three. Close quarter racing for position number 29. Now, Gillen, he's, he's right in the midst of a storm right here as the 48 tries to close the door. And he does not do it. 81 gets the low right right here. Good run off the corner. That 81 just shoots out of the corner like a, like a cannon, Tim. I just, I can't believe that. And he gets around the 48. That's another car lap down. Uh, now up to 30th position is a lap down. That's 29th in front of his teammate, Matt Witten. So I wouldn't expect that Witten should give him too much of a problem. He doesn't. 69 up the track, 81 to the bottom. Gillen puts the 29th place car of Witten one lap down. And next up on the list, about a half straight away in front of your leader is Benjamin Burmeister. It's the 48 bows out of the way of the 83 of Jarrett Crawford. 69 now in the middle of those two. It's about a half second between your top two drivers. Chad Lawton continues to run in third. Yarrell Tyen and Dustin Montgomery. Your top five, Montgomery, has recently made his way up into the top five passing Cody Baez. So Dustin Montgomery is there about uh, three quarters of a second behind Yarrell Tyen. Yeah, Tyne is now two and three quarter seconds behind the leader. Montgomery is about 3.3 back. So those guys through all these lap cars holding up the two leaders, uh, they've picked off at least two seconds. Uh, they're starting to lose a little bit right now as Gillen gets back out in clean air and starts to run some nice lap times again. But still, if Burmeister decides to hold the 81 up, uh, who's in front of Burmeister? You've got Yuke up there, Fash. You've got a lot of cars up in front of Burmeister that could really give the 81 and the 83 problems. So we'll just have to wait and see if, the, if that wad kind of breaks up or if they stay together like that when the 81 gets to them. Because if they're together, Tim, there's really not much he can do about it. This time by for Gilliland, lap number 81. In the book for the 81 car is the uh, Gary Mercer trucking 81. It continues to lead this thing. 66 bows out to the outside line. Burmeister, one lap down. And now Matt Witten will try to close in on him to get in the lucky dog position. As we work down the back straightaway, looks like Crawford's going to lose a little more time here as Crawford uh, trying to get past the 69. You mentioned 69 is the teammate to the leader. Uh, he doesn't have to roll over and give him that line, but uh, would make it a little bit easier for that second place driver. But uh, it, it's his prerogative. He can keep that line if he wants to. Hey, most certainly can. He's really not holding up Crawford. I think Crawford's tires are just gone. I saw him drive it into three that last time. He does it again. He does it a little bit better this time. It looks like the car kind of gets tight in the center. A little bit loose on entry, loose on exit, too. It just looks like he cannot make any speed around here. This time, by 21.36 for him, 21.28 for Gillen. So another eight one hundreds added on to the lead. Quickly, the lead is already shot up to 1.3 seconds, and Gillen is really starting to pull away from this field now. And next up on the list is Yuka Savalainen and Andrew Fayash the third. And that's about a quarter of a straightaway between them and your leader, Adam Gilliland. 85 laps being worked on the board as Gilliland, Crawford, Lawton, Tyen, and Montgomery, your top five. As it looks like Montgomery is closing in on Jarl Tyen as they have Brad Wright in between them for that spot. And Montgomery definitely looking good right here. Brad Wright pulls to the bottom. Looks like he's going to make a pit stop right here. All right, Dakota, lap car 48. Brad Wright coming in. What are they saying on the radio? There, the car behind the wall, guys. He was uh, at a lack of speed, and they weren't quite too happy with it. So, uh, just putting it behind the wall. I think they're calling it a night, guys. Tough right there for the 48 of Brad Wright. Is he's one of those drivers that's battling for a top 25 spot in this series to try to lock himself in to next year. Uh, but 40th place, I guess this is only his third start of the season, so he's going to need a little bit of help in order to get back up into the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship, former winner in that series. Yeah, right, he's a very competitive driver. He's, he's very quick. Uh, he went at Darlington, I believe, in the 2011 NISWC season. Arguably the hardest track on the circuit. So, uh, you know, obviously tonight the car wasn't really to his liking. Looks like he had a little bit of left side damage. So obviously had some contact there as well. So really not the night he was looking for. I believe coming into tonight, he was 40th in points. So this isn't going to help any. Uh, Brad Wright getting into the DWC seat, er, series next year 
Uh, it's not looking too good right now. But I tell you what's looking good. Um, Yolen's lead, Tim, is now 2.1 seconds, and he is just flying right now. He's uh, in the 21 twos, a completely different zip code. Uh, Crawford's in the fours, Lawton's in the threes, and everyone else behind them is in the threes as well. So Yolen again goes by one more time. Another 800's tacked onto that lead as he pulls up to the back of the 13 of Savalina. Yeah, he pulls up to Yuka as Yuka will go one lap down here if the pace of Gilliland continues up. Savalon right now in position number 27, so Gilliland starting to pick him up and lay him down once again. Your top 13 within 10 seconds of the leader as the 13 rolls over here and the 81 will pick up the spot or pick up the lap per se as he puts the 13 one lap back. Yeah, so again, that's 26 cars are going to be now in the lead lab. That's Andrew Fayash directly in front of him, about a half a second up. So, you know, again, you know, not a lot of cars going a lap down. Uh, I haven't seen pit stops yet. I believe the fuel window should be around 100 to 115 laps. Um, they can, may, you might see a lot of these guys maybe split the race in two, since they're having a huge green flag run right here. Maybe see a lot of guys pit in lap 100 try to split the race in half and go from there. Maybe see some guys try to stretch it a little bit, have a shorter run of the tires at the end. I'm not sure, but you know Gilliland is going to wait as long as possible to pit. But maybe guys like Peter Bennett, uh, you know, guys like Connors, who's back there 24th, Brandon Schmidt 23rd, Kenneth O'Keefe, who's damaged and off the pace in 22nd. You might see them short pit a little bit early, uh, get the tires under their, under their cars and try to make up some time in the leader while they can. little bit of radio communication, I guess, from the number 15. It, it feels like he's figure skating out there. So it's on ice right now for Josh Connors in position number 24. Is He's got a battle in front of him between Kenneth O'Keefe and Brandon Schmidt. O'Keefe has fallen from what was a top five run all the way back to position 23 right now. Is in this pack probably about, oh, maybe a second in front of the leader. As it looks like uh, we may have had Chad Lawton miss pit road last time by. I'm not sure if he missed pit road or he he uh, yeah he did miss pit road. He's got some rear end damage. I don't know where he got that from. Um, oh, it looks like someone might have clipped him, Tim. Yeah, when he's trying to come in, it looks like Yarl uh, clipped him, and now he's finally made it to pit road, Dakota. Yeah, guys, a lot of trouble getting on the pit road last time by, but he should be good on fuel from here coming down. Going to be a four tire stop. I do believe I see Dylan the ball also down on pit road, just trying to come in as soon as he could get four tires. Everybody coming down with four tires. The tires are almost dead on these cars. They've been out here for a long time, guys. They should be getting on fuel, like I said, from here. As Gillen pulls up to the back of the 31 of Bennett, Bennett has damage all over the place. Tim, he's got roof damage. Um, uh, we might have missed the car flipping, but we didn't have a caution, so I'm not really sure. It looks like he just got pounded in the left side door. Uh, so 31's night really hasn't been too good so far. He's going to go a lap down. That makes it 22 cars in the lead lap. Josh Connors, who's figure skating right now, is the last car in the lead lap. Lawton pulls out onto the track in front of your leader, Adam Gillen. He should be two laps down, if I'm not mistaken. But he's on fresh tires, so he's going to make him a lot of time for uh, some laps here. Yeah, give him one lap, and we'll see what the difference is as Joey Brown comes off pit road in the 12 as well. We'll give him a lap here to really get up to speed, and we'll see how different the tires are now. Keep in mind, he's in lap traffic, but look at Chad Lawton slice through this lap traffic. 73, going to be on the outside this time. Now, mind you, he's in traffic. It's a 20.6. Adam Gillen last time by 21.3. Hey, Jared Crawford also came down. Matt Boosa down and away. Joey Brown down and away. Kenneth O'Keefe way off the pace. He just pulls over. You can see Brown right behind the leader right now. Looks like Gillen's going to come in this time. He's coming in hot, Dakota. Not too many changes in that car, I don't believe. Actually, you are exactly correct. No changes to that car. Very happy with it. Four tires and fuel is the call. He is good on fuel. The only reason he's pitting just a little early is because Jerry Crawford coming down around 97. And Jerry Crawford looking to get the lead. Uh, pitting just a little bit earlier. And Adam Gillen, Gillen trying not to let that happen. Not quite as fast in the long run or short run, but he does know he has something for him in the long run, guys. It looks like Cody Bias' his teammates also down to Dakota Landon Huffman. Rob Ackley down the way. Kenneth O'Keefe is really slow down pit road. Not sure what's going down uh, on down there. We have a lead change. Tim is telling me Montgomery around time. Montgomery will come around this time by and pick up a bonus point for leading Tim. Yeah, I'm sure he'll stay out that one extra lap and get that bonus point for leading. Yarl Tyen will also stay out as well as Fay Ash is in the three. 
is on pit road. Peter Bennett's on pit road. Busy place down there. Very busy place down here, guys. As uh, I'm watching Andrew Face the third coming down, he's getting four tires of fuel. Everybody getting four tires of fuel. Uh, hard to keep up with everybody here, but uh, I'm seeing Peter Bennett, Carson Downs out here and tying in the wall here. Yeah, you got a little bit of wall glue. Oh, someone just spun into pit road. Uh, eight Montgomery misses pit road like his teammate did. Tying uh, got the wall down the back stretch. He's okay though. 78 Hanson down the way. He comes back up onto the track. Downs away. That was Vinny. Tim is telling me in the fence right there. So I believe uh, that was your C pick who was just in the fence. So that's not good for you tonight. Not good for him either, actually. Not only in the fence, he was in the pit barrels with the passenger side of that race car as well as you mentioned Dustin Montgomery missed pit road the last time he is now down on pit road to get service to the TDH delivery number eight Dakota. No yeah, guys, the brake bias is a, not quite where he thought it was when he came down pit road. Just got the brakes just a little too hard. And uh, the thing about these cars is they seem really easy when you get on the brakes very hard. Coming down four tires of fuel, gonna assess the damage on the car being as he did spin it or spin it out. I think they hit a wall, possibly. Uh, is Dustin Montgomery getting the right sides down, left sides going up, guys? And right now you've got Jarl on the track all by himself. The only other two cars that haven't pitted just yet uh, are or actually one car is Jake Sturgis, 4.7 seconds behind. Jarl's tires are gone, Tim. Last time by was a 21.75 three second lap. Cars behind him, like Rob Ackley, who we haven't seen all night, is at a 20.54 as he hits him off the corner. His time's going to come down pit road right now. He's really slow. He's out of gas, I think. He's going to be out of fuel. Yarrell Tyne going to come down on the pit road. And this is huge. He was up in the top five before this round of green flag pit stop started. I'm not sure why you would gamble that much, especially if you're up in the top five and you are as fast as the leaders as Jake Sturgis is down on pit road. Sturgis is under power. Yarrell Tyne is not Dakota. Yeah, Yarrell Tyne really out of fuel. He just, he said he was he thought he had more in it than what he did uh, when he kind of stumbled as he's not even going to make it to his stall, guys. He's eight miles per hour going down here really getting slowed up uh, not getting any help getting through pit road either uh he he thought he had more fuel in it but they're uh, running out on the back stretch and not quite able to uh, get to a stall here guys he was going to take four tires of fuel he will fall out of what was the top five and if he can even make it to a stall here he really needs to get kenneth o'keefe his teammate who's four laps down to come down there and push him i believe tim uh he's a couple spot a couple stalls away he might make it he's coasting consistently at seven miles per hour he will make it but he's going to lose a lot of time this way so that top five run he had before is now gone and that will cycle through our first round of green flag pet stops and i say first round because if these guys continue the way they are we might not see a caution here this evening adam gilliland is your leader by 1.3 seconds over jared crawford chad lawton in position number three joey brown and cody bias complete your top five as brown picks up a bunch of time on pit road a lot doesn't lose he loses a little bit of time on the racetrack but doesn't lose any spots on the racetrack and looking back for Dustin Montgomery he's gonna be back in position number eight ten seconds behind your leader Adam Gilliland after missing pit road now we only have 19 on the lead lap and uh, the last car in the lead lap is Ackley uh, he's two cars in the racetrack ahead of Gilliland but he's about three tenths slower so Gilliland is really gonna make up a lot of time on him uh, really really quick Gilliland is the fastest car on the racetrack most of the time. Uh, Crawford's the faster at time by, but 81 Gillen still setting the pace here tonight down to Dakota. Hey guys, Kyle Jenkins still uh, in the you know, 71 car on the back stretch, actually just pulling it behind the wall. His, uh, I'm hearing his engine just went boom in the middle of the back stretch, guys, and uh, he was pulled off the track for quite a while there. We've had a long green flag run here, 113 laps as the 81, and we'll look at the 17 this time. We are going to step away for a few moments, presented by Eileen Grace. Take a quick break. We'll be back to some more green flag racing action for the NASCAR iRacing Pro Series at Richmond.
Welcome back to ETV Live and the NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series from the Richmond International Raceway. Still under green since we dropped the green silk 124 laps ago. Adam Gilliland remains your leader with Jarrett Crawford in position number two, 1.7 seconds back. Then it's 5.8 back to Chad Lawton. Cody Bias and Landon Huffman complete your top five with Brown, Montgomery, Busa, Malone, and Barry completing your top ten. 124 in the book. It looks like the best battle on the track right now is for the third position. Bias all over Lawton right now. Again, Bias probably has the same piece under him that uh, Gillen does. And we've seen how dominant Gillen has been. So that 27 car really looks to be coming to the front. The second half of this race, I mean, he's all over the back bumper of the 26. He will not give him a second breathe. Down the front straightaway 27, looking at that 26 for the spot, Chad Lawton. Missed pit road when he came down for his stop. He had to come back around an extra lap, but didn't lose a position, but lost a little bit of time to your leaders as Landon Huffman makes a move back there. I believe on O'Keefe, who is the lap car for a little bit of a spot or tries to get a little bit of real estate into the number 73. Great run for Huffman, though, so far in the number 75. Is a little bit of tempers possibly flaring up here? Yeah, it looked like Connors was all over the bumper of the 42 right there uh, through one and two. He's literally pushing him all the way through the corner. I just caught that out of the corner. I had to go look at it, and they indeed were touching all the way through the corner. It's amazing that they didn't wreck, and you look right behind the 50 and the 42, and who do you see? That's Adam Gill with our leader. So he was kind of watching that. I could see him he was kind of backing off a little bit. I'm not too sure what the 15 and the 42 are going to do, uh, but Connors and Duvall settled it. They're now single file, and Gillen tries to make a way around him. Keep in mind, those have had a frustrating season so far. Duvall came in as one of the favorites to maybe get a top five or maybe even a top ten with his Gale Force Racing team and had a suspension and now is in 25th in the standings. Connors around that bubble as well, looking to make something happen. He's had great runs, just nothing able to close the deal on some of those runs. So now they're right in front of your leader battling for position number 18. Gilliland trying to uh, possibly stay out of anything that could very well happen here as the 42 and 15 uh, looking to make something happen here but not in the wrong way. Yeah, they just want to stay in the lead lap. They don't want to wreck anyone. They don't want to affect the leader, but they don't want to go a lap down. I mean, yeah, these are good cars going a lap down. I mean, I know we said that Connor feels like he's ice skating right now, but you have to remember he's in the 19th position. That's 18th and there's 17th a little bit up in front of them with the 07 of Derek Crone. So now a lot of good cars going lap down. They don't want to go a lap down. You can see right now, 15-42, starting to separate themselves just a little bit from the 81. I think Gillen is just trying to take it easy right now, keep the tires under it, wait for these guys to fall off just a little bit more before he makes his move. 15 looking underneath number 42, going down into corner number one. little contact there, maybe 15 underneath the number 42. 42 to the outside line as Duval, I'm sure, is going to chase the 15 down. And... It looks like there's going to be no contest there as the 15 begins to pull away a little bit. 42 in the wheel stand pro. Chevrolet and Pallant oh. tries to get up to him. Nothing doing there as the 15 will pick up the spot. And now the 81 of Adam Gilliland will try to make something happen here. Now keep in mind, he's back there behind these guys, but he's turning about the same laps as Jared Crawford is alone. Yeah, he's just blazing fast. <laughs> there's no other way to say he's just really quick right now. He It'd be very hard for him to lose this race. I don't know how you do it. It'd have to be like some sort of pit stop, pit stop, pit stop strategy under a caution or something that'd go wrong. But Yellen's got this race in hand. That's not. That's why he's not really pushing anything. We look at the 15, the 42. Now, you know, we we're kind of thinking the 42 would go down into turn number three and maybe give the 15 a little bit of a nudge. When you go 134 laps at Richmond in a pro race consecutively from the start. You do not want to be the guy to bring out that first caution. And I think we're at that point right now, Tim. That, oh, God, Dylan, hang on. That everyone just does not want to bring out the caution, be that guy that everyone's going to point to in the post-race. So, I mean, we've seen a lot of respect tonight. We've seen a lot of good racing. And, you know, again, I believe that's why the 42 didn't hit the 15. You just don't want to be that guy. I've never been that guy, but I pointed the finger at that guy before, and I'm sure he just can't feel too good. Yeah, we're over half the race now without a caution. 136 for your leader, Adam Gilliland, as he chases down Matthew Moose. I believe this will be number two for Matthew Moose. Moose goes the second lap down. He currently sits in position number 28. Everybody that started this race, with the exception of Kyle Tula and Brad Wright, are still on the racetrack. Josh Lawton is out here 23 laps down, looking for something to happen. Maybe pick up a couple of points if he can on the rest of the field as... He said, one of those seasons is, oh, Duval nearly loses it in front of a pack. 
Ed Duvall has got to keep it under him now. You know, like I said, you don't want to be that guy. And uh, he, I know he's tried. He's been loose all week. God, he's getting loose. He's been loose all week, and it's no different tonight. He sends it in on the 50. He's going to get a little bit loose. Everyone's getting loose. See the tail end of the 22 step out there as well. He's going to clear Moose. Moose gives him the line. And now Duvall will have some clean air. He can now cool those tires off, hopefully, and not uh, loop that thing around. He, you know, Duvall is a very good driver, and he's showing it tonight. Now, although those tires aren't doing what he needs them to do, he's just hanging on for dear life right now, and I give him a lot of credit for that. It's not as easy as it looks. 50 going to fall back in behind the 17 of Brandon Bookberger. That's actually a battle for position 17 and 50 at position 28, as Bookberger will pick up that spot. And keep in mind, these guys went about 90 laps or so, 100 laps there about on the fuel and the tires. Those guys may be pacing themselves in the first half of the race. Do we see these guys going a little bit harder, maybe using up their stuff a little bit earlier, thinking that there might be a caution, let's say, before 150? No, I'm not really sure. It just, I, I, I don't really know. I think everyone's been going decently hard right now. The, all, the whole race, though, we saw aggressive driving on lap, I believe it was like five or something when... Oh, God. Oh, Duvall up the track. He's gonna save it. Yeah, that was close. Ackley and Duvall almost had a moment right there. Well, they did have a moment, uh, but Duvall was able to hold on to it. Duvall has just really got to get out of the way right now. He's loose. He's kind of in the way. Uh, now he's behind Crawford, so that's good for Crawford to get around him. Uh, but really, really, really close to having a problem right there uh, when the 22 got in the 42's left rear. Like I was saying though, these guys are going hard. You can see it right there. You can see it when O'Keefe got to the back of Lawton. Uh, we've seen it this whole race that these guys are going hard. I don't really think anyone's holding anything back at this point. If they are, I don't think they've got much left in the tank. I want to shed a light on the 97 and 13 as Yuka Sava line and is a lap down. And he's up here with a bunch of other drivers that are a lap down. Some of them are on the lead lap. The 97 of Carson Downs is 10th place right now. Josh Berry, who's at the rear of this little pack here, is on the lead lap, as is Jake Sturgis in the 41. Sturgis is going to look underneath the number 66 of Benjamin Burmeister to try to get closer to Carson Downs in a top 10 finish in this race. But uh, there's little packs throughout this field that are, are getting pretty exciting right now. Yeah, they certainly are. You know, you go back to that pack. Uh, you go back to Matt Busa, uh, the battle for eighth place. Um, you've got him just a little bit in front of the 90 to him alone. Then about a half a second behind him is Carson Downs, who's closing in pretty quickly right now. He's a tenth quicker than the two in front of him. Then you go look at look back at Josh Berry. He's in the pack right now, a little bit slower, about a tenth and a half off. So a lot of guys running at a lot of different times right now. Like I said, we have a lot of packs forming. We have a great race brewing right now for the eighth position. The 92 and the 97 continue to move in on boost in the 34. That's a great battle as Josh Connors goes one lap down to Adam Gillen. 17 on the lead lap right now is 34, 92, 97. That's probably the closest battle on the racetrack right now for a position. As Matt Busa looking for a good run here in position number eight as we work lap 146 of 200. And just to give you an update later, it's now a 2.918 second lead. It grew about a second last 20 laps. So Gillen continues to pull away. Nothing new up there. Chad Lawton continues to hold down the third place. So Brandon Schmidt in the wall off at two. Pancaked it really hard right there. That's going to knock in the toe. He'll keep it going, though. Five still all over the 26, 26, and 27. Continue to stick right together behind them in fifth. Good run by Landon Huffman. The, uh, the RSR champion, uh, which ETV covers here, I believe it was every Monday night, the RSR League uh, goes on here on ETV. I know they'll be starting their season up uh, sometime in the next couple months, so look for that here on ETV Live. But he had a championship in that. He's running top five right now. Has a solid spot in the Pro Series standings right now and is looking to get into the 2013 NIS WC roster. If he, can, if he can continue this run tonight and have a solid run next week, he should almost virtually be locked in. So Huffman uh, knows a lot of good things are coming. If he can hold it together, Dustin Montgomery, who missed pit road, Tim, he's all the way back up to the sixth position. Uh, Joey Brown, a little bit further back at the 12th. Good run by him. He's improved that car a lot over the week. I saw him Thursday. He wasn't too happy with that car. You can just tell by that how that thing was driving the track. Really, really loose. It looks like he's gotten that thing a lot better in the last couple days. Behind him, got the lap car, Vandrew Fash, 23rd. Matt Busa at the 34th still holds 8th. But now, we look back here, 8th, 9th, and 10th, the tail end of the top 10, Tim. 34, 92, 97. They are all together with the 41 joining it as well. Yeah, there's two close battles within the top 10 right now. It's the 8th, 9th, and 10th battle that you see. Matt Busa, Casey Malone, and Carson Downs. 
and keep a half eye as well on Chad Lawton and Cody Bias. They've been running nose to tail right now for, well, about 51 laps or so since the pit stops happened about 50 laps ago. So that might not be as much of a battle as this battle is here between Busa, Malone, and Downs as Downs has run down your eighth and ninth place drivers. And now Andrew Fayash the third just in front. Casey Malone going to flash the bumper on the inside of the number 34. Nearly a moment there between those three drivers as the 92 of Malone looks at the 34 for position number eight. Yeah, you can see they all got really excited right there. Uh, the, uh, the Downs and Malone, they saw the 34 get a little bit high right there. So they gassed it up really hard off the corner. And both got the tail end hanging out. That's why I said these guys are not holding anything back. We are within 50 laps to go. It is time to go. 34, 92, 97, 41 of Sturgis. And look at that Josh Barry in 72 is starting to creep in as well. These guys are going to be in a five-car pack by the time this thing is over. You mark my words. And it's going to be a great battle. 92 looks high in the center. One and two. He's going to diamond it down a little bit different line through the corner that we've seen all night. It's a nice run off the corner. Gaps. 97 pulls up to back 34. 92-34 battle for position at number 8. The 97 is there and the 41 is now there as well. The 72 with Josh Berry a little bit behind this battle, but if they continue to go at it like they are, it will be a five-car battle before this is all said and done. 92 continues to look over the 34 position. Number 8, 155, all green on the board. Here he goes. He's going to look to the bottom right here. Malone looks to the bottom. Oh, here comes Sergis into the screen right there. He gets by the 97. So 97 kicked out of the top 10. Hello to Jake Sturgis. Welcome to the top 10 tonight. Another solid run by Sturgis. Top 5 last week in Kentucky. Looking for a solid top 10 here this week. He's currently inside the top 15 points. So very, very strong uh, 2012 Pro Series uh, for Jake. And it uh, looks like right now he'll be back into the 2013 WBC next year. Looking to redeem himself after a lackluster 2012 campaign. Tip. Yeah, fifth in points right now for Jake Sturgis, continuing to reel off some great finishes in this series. So Sturgis looking to go into that NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship with a ton of momentum. Currently 10th place right now at Richmond, and it's a strong 10th place coming to the front as the 92 and the 34 are next on the radar of the number 41 of Jake Sturgis. Sturgis is there. 92 goes up high, 41 goes down low. Jake Sturgis makes it look easy in the INX number 41 as he picks up a spot. You know, I think Sturgis might have been holding something back, Tim. If there's one car that was sandbagging this whole race, or maybe he just found something here of late, it would be him. He was faster than the leader last time by, by a pretty good amount, a lot faster than all these guys around him. So that's pretty impressive by Sturgis right now. He moves right back to 34, 3, 3, and 4. Nice run off the corner. And he'll uh, run a 21-22 that time. You compare him to the leader, Gillen, at a 21-25. So, I mean, a little bit faster than the leader. If we had a caution here, which doesn't look like we're going to have, I hope we don't. But if Sturgis could get to the back of this leader, uh, he might have something for him. As Gillen is now going to put Rich to set a lap down. That's 17th place, Tim. One lap down, so now we have 16 cars in the lead lap here with less than 40 to go. And just in front of this little battle for position number eight, you saw Vinny Sansone fall back. You see Kenneth O'Keefe with a big wiggle in front of the number 34. That was a battle for position 31 as O'Keefe now has it from Vinny Sansone. O'Keefe is four laps behind the pace of the leaders. And after a little bit of damage here falling off the pace of the Diablo skins, number 73 team will not be happy with where they finish as the 41, 34, 92, 97 all work underneath the 73 of O'Keefe. Now the 41 looks at the 34 of Busa underneath, and Matt Busa going to let him have it. Can he get down in front of Casey Malone? Malone in the number 92. It looks like he's going to let him slide into place there. What a run for Jake Sturgis. He moves up, and he'll likely catch Joey Brown, and he'll at least catch Joey Brown, I think, before the end of this race, if this stays green. He's about a tenth quicker each lap than Joey Brown, so he can definitely get around Tim Tim. Looking at the lead right now, it has shrunk. Adam Gillen's lead is 2.3 seconds. It was 3.3 about 10 laps ago. Jared Crawford has found something, or maybe Gillen got held up in traffic. I know he just put his teammate 07 Derek Crumb one lap down. That leaves 15 cars in the lead lap at this point. Let's see what it does this time. 21.19 for Gillen, and a 21. Uh, 197 for Crawford, 1,000 for the second difference. 
So the lead is kind of stabilized right now, Tim, at 2.3 seconds. Chad Lawton in third at 6.9 seconds behind. And Cody Bison in fourth at 7.1, rounding out your top five. Still Huffman, 8.0 back. It looks like the uh, the battle for third is still going on. It just seems like Bias cannot get up to the side the 26, but he can stay right in his tire tracks uh, throughout the racetrack. Could it possibly be Cody Bias maybe saving something here because it's been this way about the last 60 laps or so since we completed the round of green flag pit stops. Could Bias possibly be saving something and letting Chad Lott burn up his stuff in the 26? That's that's very likely. I mean, Bias, uh, I believe he won an A championship, uh, a Class A series championship a couple seasons ago, so he obviously knows what he's doing. So yeah, he very well could be uh, keeping the tires under it, maybe make a move with a couple laps to go. He knows he can't catch Crawford, and uh, well, I mean, you got Huffman, only about six tenths of a second behind, so if Bias is going to make a move, he better do it quick before the 75 closes in any further. Yeah, Landon Huffman is back there looking to close in on what could be a podium finish here this evening at Richmond as we work 168. Gilliland going to come up and complete that lap this time by Sharon Crawford. 2.4 seconds back as it looks like Gilliland just faster than him. Five one thousandths of a second that last time by 81 over 83. Next up on the list is Brandon Cattell. Cattell is about a half straightaway ahead of your leader, Adam Gilliland. And it's a 15th place right now. 14. Eckertel has actually stayed out of trouble tonight. The car's in one piece. He's not on his roof. He's not smashed up. That's the first time I've been able to say that all season. Cattell has had a lot of bad luck. If you want to look at anyone this season and look at bad luck, Cattell would definitely be on that list. And tonight, uh, one of the toughest tracks on the uh, one of the toughest tracks in the schedule. To him, he's kept it clean, solidly inside the top 15. Even if he does go go down a lap. That'll still be a good run for 14. He definitely needs it. 30 laps to go here at Richmond. It's been all green flag conditions in this event. Jared Crawford, 2.4 seconds behind Gilliland. Chad Lott and Cody Bias continue to run nose to tail at position number three, seven seconds and nearly eight seconds now behind your leader. Landon Huffman is right there as well in a position at number five. Uh, looking back, it's Dustin Montgomery, Joey Brown, Jake Sturgis, Matt Busa, and Carson Downs, your top ten. And look at Sturgis. He is closing in on Joey Brown. A little bit of lap traffic might help him as well, as I believe that might be Duval ahead of the 12. Yeah, he's still consistently. He's about seven minutes quicker than Brown. That'd be about three quarters of a tenth of a second. So, I mean, you know, you can see right through the center of the corner if we have a camera on him. But the 41 just closes in so much in the 12 right there. Again, Brown runs a little bit slower to 43. Sturgis at 27. So again, uh, another tenth and a half for Sturgis off the gap between him and the 12. 12 moves to the underside of the 42 with Dylan Duval as the 41 and Jake Sturgis closes in as well. Little tight quarters coming off of corner number four as the 12 and 41 go at it down the front. Yeah, you know, Duval gets out of the way right there. A little bit late, said a little bit close, but uh, not too bad. They don't make any contact, and, and they'll continue on right here. Sturgis looks down the back stretch. He's he can smell the 12 bumper now, Tim. He can definitely he can see him. He can smell him. He can feel him. Off turn number four. He's going to get a nice run. Not going to be enough though to get to the bottom. No, he's not going to have it. He'll wait another lap to make that move. 41 looking at that 12 for the spot. This is position at number 7 as they work down the back straight away. They are about two seconds off the pace of Dustin Montgomery in position at number 6. And really that battle for position number 3 right now is back there around 7 seconds, 8 seconds behind your leader. And about 4 seconds ahead of the battle you're watching now between the 12 and the 41. And they got to figure this one out because there's only 25 to go. And now we have the 26 to 27 and the 75 now is coming to join the party of Lawton and Bias. So uh, now we have a three-car battle for third. Ooh, Cody sent it in there pretty deep. It looked like Chad really checked up early for that quarter. Bias wasn't expecting that. I went up the track, allowed the 75 to close in just a little bit. Not enough, though, to make any type of move. Uh, so we'll continue on third, fourth, and fifth, respectively. Crossing the line this time, 177 in the book for Chad Lawton and Cody Bias and Landon Huffman as they battle for third, fourth, and fifth. And if they make any sort of mistake, it's going to be Dustin Montgomery all over them in the number eight card. Jake Sturge just a little bit too far back right now to battle for this spot. But if anything happens and nothing's really happened huge to bring out that yellow silk, 
in the first 178 of this race as the 27 looks again on the 26 for the spot it's uh it, i think we we might see something go off here in these late laps of this race around this battle it definitely could you know sturgis could definitely catch it those guys he's about a tenth quicker on an average uh so you know you get a bit, give a tenth times 20 laps that's two seconds he's about two and uh, well, about three seconds behind, but if they do something to kind of hold each other up, like you said, I hope you're right there. This could be a, actually a five-car battle because you have Montgomery in front of them. So, uh, you know, you definitely uh, can't count out Sturgis at this point, but really, realistically, it is between Lawton, Bias, and Huffman. It just seems like uh, Bias or Huffman, they just, they can't get to the 26. You know, they can get close to him, they can't get to him or next to him. They just don't have enough cars at this point. Yeah, I think when you look at Jake Sturgis, Dustin Montgomery, I'm pretty sure if this thing stays green and they continue up the way they are, minus some lap traffic right now in front of the 40 Warriors they're side by side. As they look at Cody Bias now underneath Chad Lawton for the spot, and it looks like the 75 going to follow through as well. So your point leader loses two spots, and he's going to have to reset himself and see what he has for the final run of this race. But I was just about to say there, too, uh, Dustin Montgomery looks like he's going to catch the uh, 26 of Chad Lawton. Uh, Jake Sturgis might be able to catch the 8 and 26 here. He might have a top 5 run if this thing stays green and he can continue to pick off spots. Uh, you know, if things could break on our AC, Jim, I'd say that the 26 got something broken. Uh, he's just over a second off the pace right now. Not really sure what's going on. It looks like the car will just not turn. It'll turn, it'll kind of fork over in the right front and then pivot. And last time by ran a 22 flat, uh, leaders in the 21 twos. I'm not really sure what's wrong with that car. It looks like he's back under power now. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. Maybe he was blinking. Maybe he had too much tape on. Maybe he didn't take enough fuel. I'm not sure, but he really lost pace very quickly. He might have hit the nail on the head on that last one. I'm going to send it down to Dakota Urban. Could this possibly be a fuel issue with the 26? We do know that he is uh, saving a little bit of fuel, and uh, they think they're going to fuel, but they're possibly a little close. Uh, Keep an eye on it, though. I, I know that I believe it was him who came in earlier uh, after missing the road the first time. I believe he got a little bit of damage. Yeah, he, yeah, he is definitely clutching it, guys, and uh, saving fuel. So I, I know he came in a little early, and I think they're uh, just getting a little close, but they should be good to go. Uh, there's plenty of laps to save, uh, save fuel from here, guys. And uh, like uh, like Dakota said, he is clutching it. So he's definitely saving fuel. He's set a 21 6 that time. So he's starting to pick it back up a little bit. But Tim, his lead over Jake Sturgis is only a second and a half. He's about a half a second off. And if he keeps running that pace, Sturgis is going to be there in three laps. So that'll put him back to seventh. And if he continues to run this pace, it wouldn't be out of the question for Brown or Busa to catch him as well, as he's really off the pace. That car is not handling well. He, not having fun clutching it right now. He's just all over the place. Points leader, not having very fun right now. Having very much fun, I should say. That car is just evil. You don't need to look far to figure out what happens when you run out of fuel. Look at that 04 car, Yarl Tyen. He ran out of fuel on the green flag run. He is two laps behind the pace, and he's actually he's probably two and three quarters behind the pace in position number 29 right now. So the only driver that, uh, or a few of the drivers that are for sure on fuel, one for sure is Yarrow Tyen because he can make a well over 100 laps on the fuel. So Tyen is uh, definitely got a decent car, especially on the long run of this race, Mike. We saw it in that first run. Yarrow might be able to make up a few spots here if a couple of guys do start slowing down and possibly saving it. He could have at least top 25 possibly in his radar. Yeah, it's definitely a stretch right now uh, with about 10 laps to go. He'd have to have a lot of people start to run out very quickly, but you never know what's going to happen. And again, you know, there's so many cars either a lap or two laps down. He can definitely make up positions. That's not out of the question at all. We're going to have Adam Gillen on the back of the 14 here very quickly. Here he is off at turn number two. Adam Gillen pulls down to the bottom into three, and he will put the 14th place car, make it the 15th place car, if you can tell, one lap down. So everyone up to 15th is lap down. Last car in the lead lap right now is Gillen's teammate, Champrone, about a second and a half up in front of the leader at this point. And it looks like they're about the same lap time right now, or, or check that, yeah, they're about the same lap time or so, they're about within a tenth or so, so Shambrone might finish this race on the lead lap, but we'll have to see. 192 in the books, eight laps to go for the 81, as he turns at 328 that time, in front of him, Shambrone's at 368, so they're about in the same ballpark. 
And meanwhile, Crawford is back in the ones somehow, some way. I don't know if he saved the tires a little bit or what, but he's now 1.85 seconds behind Gilland. He's really gonna have to step it up more, have something happen to Gilland to get up to him. Uh, oh, as Kenneth gets really loose off the corner right now, but Crawford continues to run the ones. He's now 1.79 seconds behind. So late in the going here, it might be too late though. Crawford is starting to close in the leader. Yeah, it may be too little too late for Adam here. Check that Jared Crawford in the number 83 car is he needs some help in a big way. A caution flag would set up a green-white checker for where it happened now. As the 11th place now, Chad Lawton, and he's in heavy traffic here as there's a bunch of lap down cars that are going to pass him. And Casey Malone, who's currently on the lead lap right now, going to try to work under him as the Gary Mercer trucking cars go at it. And it's not really much of a battle. 92 picks it up. He's in position number 11 right now. This time by five. They're going to go for Adam Gilliland. Oh, as Duval gets really loose, and two, they save it, they don't wreck. Lawton's okay, everyone's okay. I don't know how they saved that. Duval got loose once again, almost got to the side of the 50. Looks like Lawton's picked up the pace, and he's trying to get around these two, get away from Hanson. Oh, big wiggle for the 42 right there. This is the battle going to be brewing for the 12th and 13th position, 26 Lawton. 8 to uh, 78, Hanson, they're about a half a second apart, Tim, but Lawton is just getting so held up right now as he clears lap traffic, I thought the 70 was going to get to him, maybe not going to happen, uh, like you said before, too little, too late, um, uh, like I said, uh, 26 is back under power now, now to 21.45, so he's back up to pace, looks like he saved enough fuel, Dakota, uh, I'm guessing he's good on fuel, right? Yes sir, the crew chief just came over and told him he is good on fuel and they wanted him out of there even if he wasn't good on fuel, they was going to tell him to go anyway. They did not want him uh, in that traffic, in that uh, danger zone right there guys. Two to go at the line this time, Tim. Two laps remaining in this race and if the caution comes out now this race is over. Adam Gillen has put on a show, Jared Crawford was slower the last couple of laps, he's picked it up now, it's 1.9 seconds but he's definitely going to need a second at least in each of these laps. White flag coming here. White flag is out one more time for Adam Gillen trying to become a first time winner here in the Pro Series. He made a couple appearances last season, had some good runs. A lot of people thought he was gonna do very well this season. Hasn't showed, uh, hasn't showed this kind of strength this season so far. He's had some solid runs, but nothing like this. Coming through turns number three and four, Tim, the 81 will come out of turn number four and he will win a caution free race at Richmond. What a show, the 81 of Adam Gilliland, and what a show by this whole field. Caution free at Richmond International Raceway. I can't believe I'm saying that. What a show by these guys here as Gilliland will pick up his first NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series victory. And if this doesn't solidify himself into the top 25, uh, he, it's going to be uh, something to see next season. You mentioned him possibly vying for wins next season might want to put richmond on your radar as one of those tracks that he could buy for a win at oh definitely so he's going to be very quick and again like i said in the pre-race show for any of you that caught that uh it's going to be the same kind of deal at new hampshire i believe whoever was good here is going to be good at new hampshire if dylan can bring this car back to new hampshire and put on this kind of show again it, it's going to be a really good season for that 81 just great job to make by him. We'll go down the running order just a little bit right here. Jared Crawford comes home in second. The only one that could really keep pace with the 81. Uh, one and three quarters second, seconds behind Gill. And third is Cody Bias. Fourth, Landon Huffman. Fifth, Dustin Montgomery finally got up to fifth. Sixth, Sturgis. Seventh, Joey Brown. Eighth, Carson Downs. Ninth, Matt Boosa. Rounding out your top ten, I believe. You said this uh, before, Tim. Barry sneaks into that top ten. Gilliland going to crinkle up the back bumper of the core pipe. Gary Mercer, number 81, quickly, 11th through 20th. Casey Malone, Danny Hans, and Alex Shambrone. Chad Lawton finishes on the lead lap in position 14. Brandon Cattell finishes 15th. First driver, one lap down. Derek Rohn, Rich Doucette, Josh Connors, Rob Ackley, and Brandon Schmidt. Quickly through the rest of this field, Bennett, Fash, Duval, Savaline, and Witten. Burmeister, Bookberger, Geis, Tyen, Moose, O'Keefe, Sansone, Josh Lawton, Kyle Gatula, and Brad Wright, 35 drivers. Caution free at Richmond. We are going to take a quick commercial break and set up for the post-race show here at the Richmond International Raceway, presented by JDR Graphics, Tim's Corner Motorsports, and Eileen Grace.
Hey, dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard-driving radio. Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. Welcome back to ETV Live and our coverage of the NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series at Richmond. Caution free, and we have a first-time winner in the series. Adam Gilliland pulls into victory lane after leading 123 laps this evening at Richmond. He is down in victory lane with Mike Conti. A dominating performance by driver of the number 81, Adam Gilliland. Adam, um, I got the pleasure to race with you in the Sunday night A race, and I saw you were strong then. I knew that you were going to be strong tonight. You're actually my pick tonight, so thank you for getting me uh, maximum points. I appreciate that, but enough about me. Tell us about that car, and just tell us how you went about the race, knowing that you had the best car out there. It must have been a pretty good feeling. Man, I tell you, it felt great. Uh, going into the race, knew and I had a strong piece. Kind of messed up qualifying a little bit, but sixth place wasn't a bad starting position. Um, we worked on the set all week, me, Cody Bias. Cody Bias did a lot of work, and uh, I really felt good after that Sunday A race and uh, just carried a good, a good feeling into the tonight's race and uh, put a whole race together. Yeah, I mean, that was a fantastic job, and you really kept your head on your shoulders. You didn't do anything irrational, and, and what I was most impressed by was the way that you work lap traffic, I mean, we know that you're an aggressive driver. I mean, in, in aggression is fine, but when you got to that lap traffic, you didn't put it where it didn't need to be. You kept your nose clean, and you got through that. You know, we don't really see people working lap traffic anymore. I can't remember the last time I worked lap traffic in one of these caliber races. When you got to the back of the field, was it a little bit of a kind of like a, a different experience for you? Were you kind of nervous about trying to get up to the slower cars, or just really how did you go about that? Yeah, I was definitely nervous after uh, catching Jared there, uh, seeing he was having some difficulties getting around a few lap cars. But I really owe a lot of my patience to uh, Brandon Mercer. He was spotting for me tonight and uh, kept me uh, making uh, good good decisions, and um, that ultimately uh, got me the win. Well, Adam, I just I I just can't believe that race. You know, tell us about how you feel about going caution free at Richmond, 200 laps under green at Richmond with cars that are sliding all over the place when the tires get hot. You know, how was it like in the driver's seat to be able to keep the tires on it, keep your head in it uh, with no time to rest or take a breather? Yeah, it was, it was definitely uh, tricky to balance that. Uh, 200 laps at Richmond is just unheard of nowadays. And uh, it, was, it was just crazy. I, we were sliding all over the place. And just started out the runs after the green flag pit stops and the initial green flag run, uh, just cooling my, keeping my right rear cool because I knew uh, cars would start to back up to me because I had a good long run set up and uh, just kept my tires under me. And uh, eventually the guys in front of me came back to me and uh, was just smart about using my tires. And uh, But, yeah, like, I, like you were talking about, 200 laps, green flag all the way at Richmond's just unheard of. It was a great job by everyone to keep their noses clean. Uh, Adam, just great job once again. Before I let you go, uh, let us know who makes it happen for you. Well, i got to thank everyone, first and foremost, at Schmidt and Chassis Works. They put together a great piece, especially Cody Bias, man. He's one of the most underrated talents in the Pro Series. He's a great kid, and he made a hell of a setup tonight, and I can't thank him enough. I also want to thank uh, Core Pipe, Gary Mercer Trucking, Brennan Mercer for coming on board the rest of the season, uh, GSRacing.net, Tim's Corner Motorsports, and JDR Graphics. All righty, Adam. Great race tonight. We'll look for you next week when we head to Dover International Speedway. Going to throw it down to Tim Terry, who's caught up with the second-place finisher, Jared Crawford. Jared Crawford starts on the pole, leads 69 laps, comes home in position number two, and Jared, it looks like we're closing at the end. A little bit of lap traffic, time ran out on you. Talk about that run to the finish. Well, first off, big congrats to Adam. Uh, he basically showed me how to drive when he blew my doors off on that first run. Um... That and I, I was short on fuel the whole second run, so I had to pedal it. I basically ran it like a nationwide car, and uh, 
actually went really, really fast at the end. I was shocked at how fast the car was. I went from thinking the car was junk to it was amazing. And uh, all that credit is due to Dustin Montgomery, who really put a great car together. Uh, kind of last minute. We've been struggling all week. And I don't know. I, I knew if I could run as hard as I wanted to the last 30, I might have been able to catch Adam. But I just didn't have the field to do it. So I just had to settle with... Uh, second and um i'm just i'm shocked at how fast the car was i didn't even really get past like 70 percent throttle on the straightaway and i was catching people it was kind of kind of bizarre and a lot of lap traffic to deal with there talk about you and adam going through that lap traffic there at the start of that race the first run made things a little bit interesting there yeah i want to apologize to brandon bushberger um uh, I caught up him, up to him so fast, I didn't know he was slowing down that early and just squarely hit him. Thank God it was square because it just sent him straight, and uh, I let him gather it back up. And I really wanted to work on him and pass him cleanly, which I did uh, eventually. And uh, I don't know, it was just the car, my car was so loose the first run, I could not get a run off the corner to clear lap cars where Adam was just killing me. Looking at the point standings, and it looks like 22 points coming in. You're going to cut that about in half. Of course, there is one drop coming up here as well. But is there opening up a little bit of hope here, possibly, to catch Chad Lawton for this championship? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, I've been pretty consistent. I've gotten seconds pretty much every race, except for Daytona and Pocono, where I got 24th and 3rd. So, I don't know. With the drop weeks, Chad's still probably too far out of reach but uh i'm doing everything i can to to catch him dover next week before the holiday break how big is it to get a good run there to set yourself up for momentum for those final two races at new hampshire and charlotte very important um dover is a very challenging track the car tends to get really slick coming out of the corners and uh, it's just it's going to be hard to keep it clean. I thought this race was going to be a mess, but all these guys proved me wrong, and I'd like to thank all of them for racing with such respect and clean. It was a really good show. Talk about who makes it happen for you, some sponsors, and, of course, the team that helps you get to the track each week. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Tim Terry, for the Tim's Corner Challenge on the car, and uh, I'd like to thank all the guys at Wheelman Inc. Uh, really big team effort this week uh, by Tyler, Dustin, Rich Doucette, uh, Chad Lawton, Josh Lawton, Jason Carlavage, Rob Mayhar, Thomas, all these guys. I mean, they, they made it happen this week. We, uh, we went from junk to maybe a winning car, maybe not. Uh, but it was definitely a good piece. That's Jared Crawford coming home in position number two. Going to kick it over to Mike, who's caught up with our third-place finisher, Cody Bias. Cody Bias, teammate of our winner tonight, Adam Gillen. Cody, we know you had a fast car under you. Uh, going through this race, what was your strategy uh, because of the long green flag runs here tonight and the lack of cautions? Well, mainly my strategy was just to keep the rear tires underneath me the whole race. Um, not expecting to go green the entire race, but it's a big surprise. But the car handled great, and just try to manage loud traffic throughout the race was the biggest challenge. Uh, tell us about tire conservation tonight. I know that the rear tires got heated up very quickly. It seems like you were able to keep the tires under it. Um, what did you do tonight to try to, uh, to try to minimize the rear tire heat? Mainly just easing into the corner and then easy off, just worrying about rolling the center better than everybody else. But other than that, nothing really, just easy off, easy in. So you had a good car tonight. We go next week to Dover before we have our two-week uh, winter recess. Uh, you guys ran really well here tonight. Um, what are you looking for next week at Dover? Oh, well, Dover being one of my favorite tracks, I'm looking really forward to that race, knowing that we have a lot of momentum going into it today, and I'm just hoping we can continue this dominance that we showed tonight. All right, Cody, before I let you go, just let us know who makes it happen for you. First off, I'd like to thank all the boys back at Schmidt and Chassis Works. Um, they helped me a lot this week, put on, had a great piece this week. Also, I'd like to thank Kyle Paddle for spotting me and keeping me cool and calm tonight. Also, like to thank Elwood Designs for being on board this year, Gary Mercer Trucking for coming on board also, and GSRRacing.net. Alrighty, Cody, great run. We'll look for bigger and maybe a couple spots better from you next week at Dover. And send it down 
to Tim Terry, who's caught up with Landon Huffman, I believe. Fourth place finisher here this evening, Landon Huffman and Landon. It was a hard charging fourth place finish. Talk about those battles near the end of the race that got you up to the fourth place spot. Well, first off, this is uh, unfamiliar territory for, for myself in this series. I've, the first, I don't know, five weeks or four weeks, just uh, terrible luck and couldn't put anything together. When we ran up front, something happened right at the end. And um, I was really down on myself, you know, just wanting a good finish. And then went into Kentucky last week and grabbed a sixth and kind of got the ball rolling for me. And then, you know, Richmond being one of my favorite tracks, um, this is actually – Probably my favorite part of the schedule with Richmond here and then Dover coming up. But um, coming into Richmond, I was shooting for a top five. I thought I might have a shot at winning it, but uh, those guys were definitely better than us. But um, come out and was able to claw my way into the top five. I think Chad had to pit there, and that cost him. But uh, it seemed like uh, when the guys in front of me would catch lap traffic, it was a lot easier to, to run them down. I just figured, I'll, figured out I could pile it off into the corner and get it to turn and uh, still be able to drive up off. So. Slow start to this season, but you're going to gain a little bit here. 16th in points after this evening's racing action. How does it set up for the final three races? Obviously, the top 25 is the goal, but where do you think you can finish in points? Possibly top 10 here? Uh, if, uh, if I keep up these good runs, I think top 10 is a uh, is reasonable, and uh, I'm capable of, um, of reaching the top 10, I believe. But... Um, it's going to take some more luck, like tonight in Kentucky. I can't have any of that luck that I had at the beginning of the year. Um, I may be pushing, making top 25. So I uh, just got to keep my head on my shoulders. And uh, my spotter, R.J. Williams, he does a good job um, keeping me calm during the race. There's times where I get uh, been out of shape, but he does a good job keeping me calm. And uh, just got to keep going on this path and see what happens. Dover coming up in one week time. What do you got for the boys there? Uh, I really like Dover, and uh, all the guys at Last Road Motorsports have put together another awesome set for there, so I can't wait. Um, I think it's a few tweaks away from being really good, and I uh, couldn't thank those guys enough um, these past few weeks, and they all se and you know all season for that matter. Uh, they put together some uh, outstanding setups to come out here and be competitive for these guys. So um, going into Dover, I think we're going to have a good shot at uh, top five and maybe the win. You mentioned some of the crew. You got some sponsors on the car. Who makes it happen for you each week? Uh, Real Sim Racing. Uh, it's an awesome league. Um, anybody that enjoys longer races in the cup car and uh, the truck and Nationwide and um, some of the series over there are broadcast as well. So check that out. And uh, Sim Seats, www.sim-seats.com. Um, if you go over there and you uh, check out... Um, with them and purchase something you can use the discount code LH75 and get 5% off anything you purchase so that's pretty cool and uh, guide riggers C2C racing designs and last row motorsports that's Landon Huffman coming home in position number four we go down to fifth place Dustin Montgomery with Mike Conti maybe we don't go down fifth place with Dustin Montgomery I don't see him up here so we'll uh We'll wait to see if we can wrangle him up, Mike. But uh, final thoughts here from this evening. Caution-free at Richmond. When's the last time we said that in any series here on iRacing? Actually, um, John will remember this. Uh, I believe two seasons ago, the Friday Night B-Car Showdown right here on ETV Live went caution-free at Richmond. So it must be something about ETV, and and uh, we, we just must have some sort of magic that we put on the fields when we come here to Richmond. But, I mean, it was just all honesty and seriousness. That was... That was great. It's great racing, very exciting, a lot of aggressive driving, but a lot of smart racing as well, and that's why we had 200 laps under green, successful pit stops under green, uh, just everything that you could ask for. I mean, that race could not have been any better. Uh, I can't thank John enough for giving us the great coverage that he does every week with the cameras, and uh, everyone else that's behind the scenes at ETV that doesn't get enough credit that they deserve. Uh, they do an awesome job, and to be able to go 200 laps in the green at Richmond and keep up with everything, that's quite an accomplishment. So um, I'm glad that we got out of here uh, with a good race and a great race, to say the least. The next week we'll go to Dover, and hopefully we'll see more of the same thing. And it doesn't look like Dustin Montgomery is going to be here. We'll catch up with him on a future race here for the NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series on ETV Live. Once again, one week time, we head to Dover 
for the next round. Then there's a holiday break, and then we have two more races, New Hampshire and Charlotte, in the calendar year of 2013. That's going to do it for us here this evening on ETV Live. So for Dakota Urban, John Wesley, Mike Conti, my name is Tim Terry, saying that we will see you next week. We say let's go racing with the NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series on ETV Live.